Uh, if we assume that the radius is uh, maybe it's 10, 15 centimeters, whatever, let's take a radius of 15 centimeters. And we can calculate now what the centripetal acceleration is. And the centripetal acceleration, A of C, which is omega squared r, is then roughly about 20,000 meters per second squared. 20,000 meters per second squared. And that is 2,000 times the gravitational acceleration. It means that these particles experience gravity, which is 2,000 times stronger than if I don't rotate them. And so they will go to the side here. But the glass itself is also 2,000 times heavier. And therefore, the glass can easily break. So when you design a centrifuge like that, you have to really think that through very carefully, that the pieces that are in there don't fly apart. I have here water in which I have dissolved some table salt, same table salt that you use in the kitchen when you prepare your food. Table salt in here. Here I have water in which I dissolved some sulfur nitrate. It's, it's nasty stuff. I warn you for it, you have to be very careful because if you get the stuff on your hands, it burns through your hands very quickly without you realizing it and you end up with a very black spot, really eats away, burns out your skin. People put it on wards and then the wards they think fall off. They probably do after a while, but your finger may also fall off. So I have here sulfur nitrate and there I have uh, sodium chloride. And I mix the two, so I get table salt, sodium chloride, plus silver nitrate, gives sodium nitrate plus silver chloride, and this very small white particles, and you will see that the liquid turns milky instantaneously. It almost becomes like like yogurt, as you will see. And so I want to show that to you. I have here these two glasses. This is the table salt and this is the sulfur nitrate. I'm going to mix them. I hope you can see this. Here are the two glasses. And when I mix them, <whistles> instantaneously you get milk. I'm not asking you to taste it, but look at it, right? Just milk. And you can leave this for hours and hours and hours, and it will just stay like that. Very small particles of silver chloride are in here. So now we're going to put this in the centrifuge. I have to put it in a very small tube. I'll show you this small tube. There's no way that I can pour that in without making a mess. Here's a small tube, and so what I will do is I will first put it in a small beaker, and then from this small beaker, I will transfer it, some of it, to this tube. When you put this in a centrifuge, the force on this glass is so high that you must always make sure that you balance it with another tube that you fill with water on the other side. Otherwise, the thing begins to shake like crazy. It's like your, your centrifuge when you dry your towels. If they are not equally distributed, it begins to make very obscene sounds and starts to move. <laughs> and the same thing will happen here. So you just have to take my word for it that we have put on the other side just some water to balance it out. So here is now the yogurt, and on the other side is plain water, and we'll just let it sit there for a while, and we will return to that shortly. I mentioned already you centrifuge for your clothes. That is the way that you can dry your clothes. That is the same way that my grandmother dried the lettuce. The water will go to the circumference. 
A household centrifuge for your clothes would easily rotate 1,200 revolutions per minute, have a radius maybe of 15 centimeters, which would give you a centripetal acceleration of 200 times g, 200 times the gravitational acceleration. So your clothes experience gravity, which is 200 times stronger, and therefore your clothes are 200 times heavier, and therefore your clothes can tear apart. And we have all seen that. We've all put in stuff in a centrifuge, and when you take it out, you're disappointed because it's torn. That's because of the tremendous gravity that you have exposed them to. Many times when I take my shirts out, half my buttons are gone. That's because the force, I shouldn't use that word, the gravitational effect on the buttons is enormous. And they just get ripped off. Now I want to revisit the situation that you are on the end of my string and I'm going to swirl you around. Earlier I swirled you around like this and you didn't like it and I don't blame you because you got dizzy. Now I'm going to rotate you like this. You may like that better. Maybe not. <laughs> and so, whether you like it or not, I'm going to twirl you around and here you are. This is the circle, there's a string, you're here, here's the string, and there you are. You have a certain velocity, the velocity is in this direction, and there is a certain distance to the center, r. And so you need a certain centripetal acceleration to go around in that curve. So you need a centripetal acceleration, a of c, which is, you can take the v squared divided by r, if you like that, this is the magnitude of that v. Now follow me very closely. Just imagine that this number happens to be exactly 9.8. I can always do that. 